<laughs> You're welcome. Yes, my name has been a problem from the start. I, I started working on Turkey, but uh, to be honest, it's not only Turks that have a problem with my name. It's most of all the non-Dutch uh, have, have a difficulty. So I've seen all the variations over the year, over the years. So uh, I'm happy finally I was uh, I was recognized. Um, my goodness, uh, to uh, do a TED talk after two such inspiring ladies is is not easy. Um, what I'll do is. Uh, uh, starting off with the title, you know, dreams, uh, desires, and, and what to do. Um, okay, dreams, uh, desires, ambitions, uh, you need. I mean, without dreams and desires, life is plainly dull. Uh, it's, it's not much fun if you don't have an idea of where you want to go, what you want to reach, where do you want to go to. Uh, so that is the basis. But I'm also raised as a Calvinist in the Netherlands, so there's a but. So dreams, but. Uh, and there are three uh, things you need as well. So you need a dream, you need ambition, uh, but you also need uh, patience. I'll, I'll explain you why. And you also need perseverance. You need to be able to continue even if it's not that easy. And you need to be able to, to be self-critical. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to explain those three things, plus the dreams, of course, um, based on two episodes in my own life. Uh, my first ambition, my first big dream in life was to become a, a bookseller, a publisher in the Netherlands. Um, and my second was to become a, a politician. That's where most of you uh, probably know me from. Um, so going back to uh, when I uh, left university, in the in, you know, uh, end of the 70s, uh, I was educated as a historian. Uh, and at that time, there, was very little, uh, there were very little jobs for historians. I mean, basically uh, academics. Maybe when you were an engineer, you could find a job as a historian. Forget about it. Um, so I thought, okay, I love books, uh, I love to read, uh, I would love to sell books, not to, to discover them, to buy them everywhere, and sell them to interesting people. How, how to do that? So there were no jobs, all the, all the uh, bookshops said, uh, thank you very much, <laughs> but we have very experienced uh, people, uh, so go somewhere else. So what I decided to do is, uh, so there was no job, there was no paid job, so I decided to become a volunteer in a small left-wing uh, bookshop uh, somewhere in the, in the, in the center of, of the Netherlands, uh, trying to, to get the experience as a bookseller, what, it, what does it mean to, to be uh, working in a bookshop, just by doing, no money, uh, so just getting the experience. It was good, it was a fun place to be. Um, I love being a volunteer, but of course I was thinking, okay, I hope one day uh, I'll be able to make a profession out of this. And what happened after three years? Um, some of my former colleagues from the same shop came by and said, we have a vacancy in, uh, in one of the big uh, left-wing, very famous bookshops uh, in Amsterdam. Would you like to apply? Um, that's what I did. I had a, a talk with you know, the, the owner of the shop, a very famous Dutch publisher um, and book, bookshop owner. I was very impressed. And he said at the end of the talk, okay, uh, we're impressed by your experience as a volunteer, your commitment, uh, the fact that you want to, to, to invest in your own career, so come and join us uh, uh, at, the, at the shop. And uh, so I was delighted uh, to be able to, to go there, and I will, I will never forget the, the, the words he told me almost on my first day. He said, okay, Joost, um, welcome uh, to the company, to the publishing house and the bookshop, um, but there's one thing you, you need to know. Um, he said it's very good to have uh, good ideas, to have dreams about all the, the, these expensive books that you want to order in the States and sell to these academics in, in Amsterdam, fine. But dreams, having dreams is one thing, but you have to be able to sell them. Because this is a bookshop, uh, this is a publishing house. So I said, okay, okay, of course, of course, I'll, I'll do that. I'll buy these expensive books and I'll find a customer for that. Did it work? Uh, no, it did not. Um, after one year, uh, the, book had, the bookshop had to close. This was not, of course, only due to my mistakes, but in general, it was a great place to be. You know, all the intellectuals came there looking for books. We were trying to find all these books. Uh, online was still only, com I mean, talking about the beginning of the 80s. Um, so it was difficult to find them. We, we managed, but we couldn't sell them. We had great books, we had a great stock. But commercially, it was a disaster. So uh, my first dream more or less ended there. You know, it was great to be there. Uh, I worked my butt off uh, in, the, in that bookshop, but it didn't work. Uh, commercially, it was not viable. Then, because I met uh, people from, from other publishing houses in that bookshop, I managed to get a job in publishing. So for seven years, 
I was the uh, director of a, of a publishing house, more or less 20 journalists, producing magazines for professionals working with disabled people, uh, handicapped people, young people, trying to give them new information about their job, about the new methods in their job. It was fun to do. Um, and after that, I worked for three years as, as a book publisher. So, you know, my dream then was you know, to publish the best magazines, work with the best journalists, provide the customers with the best knowledge they, they needed to have to do their job, to do their job in, in social, social affairs uh, policy. Um, and later, when I was a book publisher, you know, to find the book, to, have, to commission the books, the best books that people wanted to read and wanted to talk about. Um, but then I bumped into another uh, problem. Oh, commercially, in the beginning, it was, it was okay. But then, you know, I was the one, I was the chief editor, I had to find all those books, I had to find all those authors, uh, and I found them, and they wrote beautiful books according to me. But people didn't buy them. You know, there was a gap, there was a gap between what I thought was good, what was excellent, what was, should be read, and what people wanted to buy. Interest had shifted over the years. Since I, I had left university, people wanted to read other books that we didn't publish. We published books that were, again, very good, very quality, but nobody wanted to buy them. So after a while, uh, you know, my, my boss at the publishing house said, repeating more or less what my first boss has said, great books, Joost, but they don't sell. So what are we going to do here? Uh, a publishing house, you need not only to make books, you also need to sell books. And that's what you apparently are not very good at. Uh, so I said, okay, give, give me some time. I'll find a combination between my own uh, preferences and what the public wants to buy. Did it work? No, it did not. Uh, after three years, I was sacked as a, as a publisher because, again, we published great books, but they didn't sell. Same with the magazines. The magazines for the first seven years, it was okay. At the end of those seven years, I managed to sell the publishing house to a bigger publisher, but commercially, it was, it was touch and go. It was not so easy. Again, the magazines were great. Everybody said, what great magazines. But uh, subscription, paying for that was, was another thing. My lesson from that first period is, okay, it's very good to have dreams. It's, it's good to have ambition. It's good to put everything you have in making magazines, in, in trying to make books. But if you can't sell them, then something is missing. So you need dreams, but you also need the cleverness, the commercial instinct to run a business, be it a bookshop, or a publishing house. Uh, so, okay, then afterwards I went into politics. Um, was going into politics always my dream? No, it was not. You know, when I was at school, uh, I was basically interested in football. I was quite a good football player, to be honest, and, uh, and in pop music, that was it. You know, till, till, till I was 20, years, first years at university, I didn't give much for, for politics. But then, of course, we're talking end of the 70s. A lot happened in the world. I studied history. So it was almost inevitable that you would get interested in politics. And uh, so I decided, okay, uh, interesting world. M let's try to enter that. Again, you know, becoming a politician, you know, th these jobs are not for sale. Or they are not maybe in Turkey, but not in the Netherlands. Uh, so I had to start real down. I had to start as a local activist, uh, distributing leaflets at the central station uh, once a week to, to, be, to, to get people interested in, in the politics that we were performing as a left-wing, small left-wing party. It was fine. I mean, if you want to get somewhere, you need some time to start at the bottom. I became a local uh, board member, and after some time, I became a national board member of the same, of the same uh, party. So, you know, I was getting closer to my dream. A dream was fighting, trying to improve the world, make it a more just, uh, non-violent, green world. So I was in the, in the national board of that party trying to, you know, to steer the course uh, of that political party. And then I made, but this is looking back, then I made one big mistake, and I think a mistake many people make when they are in politics. I thought that my dream you know, of how the world should be, just non-violent, non green, was the only dream available. And that other people who maybe disagreed with my dream for 10% or 15% were totally wrong. And these were my biggest enemies because they didn't respect my dream, so I was going to hit them for their dream. So the lesson for that was that, yes, big dreams again are important because otherwise you don't enter into politics. You have to have an idea of the world where you want the world to, to, to come. But if you are stuck to your own dream and you're convinced only of your own big dream and not willing to accept that there are other people quite close to you 
might even with a slightly different dream, you should cooperate with those people and not kick them. What I did and what we did in that party, we had a lot of infighting, you know, big ideals, big dreams, big intolerance. So that also comes with big dreams. You know, big dreams is one thing, to be able to cooperate with other people with other big dreams is another thing. Uh, did we manage in that small left-wing party? No, we did not. No, we were infighting, we fought each other to hell, and the party went down. And that was the moment that I started to realize, okay, guy, having great dreams is one thing. You have to, be, you have to open up. You have to accept that there are other people who have a dream as well that might slightly differ from yours. Cooperate with them. Don't uh, antagonize them, which was what we were doing up till then. So we founded a new party, 1989, the Dutch Green Party getting all kinds of different left-wing parties together with different dreams, trying to formulate a, a new dream. Um, that was good. That was good. It worked. Uh, it worked because the dream was fine. Uh, the dream was appealing. It was in the beginning of the 90s. Green IDs were very popular uh, uh, those days. Um, and, uh, and we were lucky to find someone who was able to sell the dream. Because this selling dreams is not only what you need to do in a bookshop or in a publishing house, you need to do it in politics as well. Your ideas can be perfect on paper, maybe realized in some place. If you are not able as a politician to explain to ordinary people why your ideas are the best and better than your competitors, you're not a good politician. And so we start, when we started the party, we had very competent, very decent politicians not able to communicate not able to sell their good ideas. And only when we found someone, by accident, a very good communicator, who was able to sell the same ideas to the same kind of people in a convincing way, without slashy or showy things, people were convinced that this guy is into it, that he's convinced of his own ideas, and he's willing and able to convince us as well. So that was, that was a very inspiring place, you know, uh, a very inspiring uh, experience, to see someone who is able, because he has the charisma, can you develop a charisma? Sometimes you can, a bit, but most of the time you, you have it or you don't have it. He had it and he was able to, tra to translate our ideas that we had, our dream about a green uh, Europe, a, gr a green Netherlands, he was able to translate it into, into reality. Then so, a few years after, I had worked with him for, for a couple of years, I was asked to enter as a professional politician as well. Until then I was a volunteer. I had my job as a, as a publisher and I volunteered as a, as a free-time, freelance uh, politician. So I was asked, do you want to go to the European Parliament you know, to, to present the party and to defend what people knew was another dream of mine, the dream of Europe. Uh, Europe is also a dream. For many people it was an illusion. When, when people started to talk about the European Union in the 1940s, in the 1950s, people said, come on guy, stop dreaming, this is never going to work. Uh, this is about uniting countries, France and Germany, for instance, that have fought each other for 100 years. Do you really think that these countries can cooperate, can sit together and work together and uh, you know, talk about their differences? Forget about it. Fortunately, those people with their dreams in the 50s continued. Again, patience, perseverance, you need that to involve, to implement your dream. So the European Union was there when I entered in 1998. Uh, it, was, it was a nice and a good dream to explain to people. You know, because also dreams need explanation. You know, only having a dream and thinking everybody will understand, uh, I don't need to explain, is not going to work. So I was there and my biggest ambition then was to be able to explain the European dream to ordinary citizens in Europe. Because a lot of people think, well, even now after 50 years, what exactly is it? Do we really need to work with these Germans or do we really need to work with the Greeks who are spending too much and then the Finns, you know, uh, you can't l make a joke with the Finn. I mean, wh why should we work with all these Europeans together? We need to do. We need to do. That's the lesson of history. I'm deeply convinced it's the lesson of history to do so. And so sitting there, being in the European Parliament, I stumbled into Turkey. Was it ever my dream to enter politics to get Turkey in the European Union? No, it was not. I happened to be there when Turkey was applying for membership and was getting close. And then I was asked to, to help, to communicate, to, to, ex to explain in, in Europe what Turkey was all about and in Turkey what the EU was about. Uh, was it always my ambition? No, it was not. When I started doing it, I started liking it more and more. Um, because I'm convinced, deeply convinced still, up, up until today, 
now. After 10 years of difficulties, and you know all of them, I'm not going to go into that, all these difficulties about Turkey and the EU, mistakes made on both sides in Europe and in Turkey, uh, and we're far from realizing that dream of having Turkey inside the European Union. Now, when you're talking about bridging differences, France and Germany were one set of big differences. Turkey, the difference between Turkey and the, the gap between Turkey and the rest of Europe is maybe even bigger. But I'm convinced it can be done. It's, it's my personal dream, it's the dream of many people, uh, but you have to be patient there. If, if you're too rough and you think, okay, this is my big dream and everybody who disagrees with me is my enemy, then you're lost. Yes, there are people in Europe who are against Turkey's accession. Yes, there are people in Turkey who are against Europe. They are there, you have to try to convince them, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, you have to have perseverance. As I told you, in 2005, when we started the negotiations with Turkey, I thought, okay, maybe eight years, ten years, and I'm quoted so many times saying, uh, asking the question, you know, or um, uh, how long will it take, Mr. Lagenheit, for Turkey to, to get into the European Union? I keep on saying every year, well, eight or ten years. Uh, so even now, if you would ask me the question, I would have to say, yeah, probably eight or ten years. So we're far from there. Uh, you know, it's still a dream. It's, it's quite a far away dream. Um, so you need patience, you need perseverance, and you need self-criticism. Because maybe on the road, uh, we, the Europeans, made some mistakes. And I'm sure Turkey made some mistakes. So we have to adapt, we have to see what we can learn from those mistakes. Again, only dreams, only having dreams is not enough. Uh, not in the bookshop, not in the publishing house, and also not in politics. And that is, uh, you know, the, 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 the kind of message that I would like to convey to you. Please dream. Please have your ambition. Please have your desires, because otherwise uh, life sucks. Life is not worth living. No. You need to be able to have an idea where you want to go, but you need to be flexible as well. And you need to be able to change course sometimes or change your dream. Uh, if it doesn't work today, maybe it works tomorrow. If somebody works against you, don't immediately kick at those people, because people might have another dream, different than your dream. But they're entitled to their dream as well. Now, it's quite a balancing act to have your own dream, to be very ambitious about your own dream, because you have to be ambitious about your own dream, and at the same time accept that the people around you, in politics, or in the publishing house, or in the bookshop, might have a slightly different dream, and still you have to cooperate. Having your own dream, only fulfill your own dream on your own small island, is not that fulfilling. So, to have your dream, please stick to it, but learn that patience, perseverance, and self-criticism are needed as well, and only, you can only, uh, accomplish your dream uh, together with people who have another dream. Accept that, work together, uh, that's the only way out. Thank you very much.